Hello, my name is John Mugno and I'm a Rybrook uh, Village resident. I'm going to be your host on a new program the village is inaugurating that interviews people who are important to the village and, will, and who will focus on specific topics. Our guest today is Steve Otis, who has been the Assembly District 91 representative in the New York State Assembly since 2003. His district runs north along the Sound Shore and includes Rybrook. Welcome, Steve. John, great to be with you and, and great to be part of what I think is a, a public service to get information out to Rybrook residents about uh, what is going on. And so I'm, I'm uh, happy to be part of uh, the broadcast. Oh, well, we're glad you're, you came, Steve. Thank you. Steve, you've been in public service in uh, New York State for over two decades, uh, including serving as the mayor of the city of Rye from 1998 through 2009. What attracted you to public service? Well, uh, that's a great question. Uh, I knew I wanted to be in public service uh, from uh, when I was young, when I was going to college or even before then. And so I've been fortunate in addition to my years in elective office. Uh, I also was council and chief of staff to Susie Oppenheimer and, and worked for the state Senate for many years. And so uh, you can contribute uh, in many valuable ways without being an elected official, but I've been able to serve as, as you mentioned, as mayor of Rye and, and now in the, in the assembly uh, for about 10 years. Uh, and and uh, the mission though is really the same, which is it's about uh, being in touch with what problems arise and trying to find ways to solve them. And, and so uh, that's been uh, a pleasure uh, for the assembly district I represent is the Sound Shore from Rybrook and uh, Porchester all the way through New Rochelle. So I have all of those communities and uh, the variety of problems that come up and uh, it's, it's rewarding, but I, I love uh, the work and I've been fortunate after many years that this is uh, the, the, the career that uh, I have chosen. I feel fortunate I've been able to, to serve in this way and, and solve problems. Great. Now you've, <clears throat> You're basically, as you said, the representative in the assembly for your district. And what makes you perhaps not unique, but perhaps not common either, is that you also served as a local official and worked uh, in a municipality in your district. What insight, and others, people have mentioned to me that they think that gave you insights into how New York State uh, policies and legislation will be implemented at the local level. Can you uh, elaborate? Do you agree? And if so, could you I, I, I totally agree. And it, it is funny because in the assembly, there are two uh, former city mayors in the assembly, uh, John McDonald, who was the mayor of Cohost, New York, and myself. And uh, we are uh, very close friends, but we are uh, we have dubbed ourselves the Mayor's Caucus, and uh, we really do speak to NICOM with great frequency, the Association of Towns, uh, and uh, really try and look at state issues from a local government perspective, which not all uh, folks in, in the legislature who came from local government maybe continue to uh, carry that value system um, as much, but we do, and it's, it's I think, a, a great asset. And I work very closely with the local governments and the communities I represent. And I will share with you uh, Paul Rosenberg, uh, Chris Bradbury, the Village Board in Rye Brook. Um, everyone is very well served. It's a, it's a, a professionally uh, run local government, the village board. Uh, they're not a lot of politics. They're about solving problems. And Chris does a great job on the professional side as, as village administrator. So they're great to work with and issues come up and we, we work closely together as well as with the, with the town of Rye and, and Gary Zuckerman, um, who's the town supervisor and his staff. Oh, great, thank you. And that kind of leads me into my, my next question. What uh, direct benefits 
can you anticipate for a community like Rye Brook from the latest New York State budget? Sure. Well, uh, among other things, we're able to uh, improve the situation in terms of uh, assistance to local governments uh, for uh, some of the uh, road, state assistance for roads that, that they receive, uh, protect the funding for the, uh, what is called AIM funding, which is the local government funding that state provide, the state provides local governments. Um, very good money for our school districts, uh, both uh, uh, Blind Brook and uh, the Porchester School District um, received uh, good help in the budget. And uh, we were able to avoid some changes in the formula that would have been harmful to both school districts. So there is that, but there's also uh, for small businesses, especially coming off of a year of COVID, uh, special assistance for small businesses, for restaurants uh, and uh, arts organizations. And some of this funding, uh, we're, we're taping this on, on May 27th, but uh, some of this funding is just becoming available through an application process in the beginning of June. And so uh, anyone who is interested should contact my office or uh, uh, Senator Shelley Mayer. We work closely together on these issues and we can help you navigate uh, the availability of those funds. But some of them are one time only because of the year after COVID and uh, our businesses were hurt very hard by uh, business closures and slowdowns and people staying at home. And so there is uh, grant funding, especially as part of that, which I was very much a proponent of in the assembly, uh, wearing some of the hats I, I wear in, in our house. Great, thank you, Steve. I mean, you can just see looking around the community, both in Rye Brook, City of Rye, Port Chester, how many small businesses have uh, not been able to survive this extended uh, slowdown and shutdown. So I think that help will be very much welcome. I also, uh, when I was doing a little research for our talk, I was told you did something that Rye Brook regarded as really important to it in terms of its finances. Uh, that is, you were able to secure for the village of Rye Brook a no cost lease on some New York State Department of Transportation property, which the Rye Brook Public Works Department could use while its new uh, facility was being built. Well, and we all want to say thank you for doing that. We appreciate it very much. Well, you know, I think that uh, again, you get a phone call from, uh, 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 in this case, uh, Chris and Paul, and, and they had this problem and look for some brainstorming. And uh, luckily, I have uh, built up over the years good relationships with folks at a variety of different state agencies. And so we were able to try and work something out that was worked uh, for uh, the state DOT and, and helped uh, uh, Rye Brook. Uh, but issues come up all the time. And I, I, I'll, I'll mention something else that came up a, a couple of years ago, which is um, the closing of the Arrowwood uh, complex, uh, yeah. and then more recently, uh, the closing of the Rye Town Hilton. And uh, one of the things I worked on when I worked for Senator Oppenheimer was to be able to get the village of Rye Brook, the first non-city or county in the state, to get a hotel tax uh, uh, authority that brought um, significant revenues into the village from those two uh, those two businesses. And so now with both of those closed and not sure what is going to happen at those sites, but it's looking like not to be hotels, that this creates a, a new hole in the village's budget where they were able to really use those revenues to pay for capital expenses for uh, over 10 years uh, uh, with those revenues. So uh, certainly uh, eager to just try and solve the individual problems that come up for communities I represent. And that is one that I think we're all going to be uh, looking for uh, ways to, uh, to uh, buffer that impact. Yeah, you're absolutely correct. I was looking at the village's budget and the decline that used to be, the hotel occupancy tax used to be a very 
important contributor, and now, of course, it's effectively zero. Yeah. So about there's something needs to replace it. About 700,000 a year, it was sort of on, on the average, that's a, a, a lot of money um, that uh, the property taxpayers benefited from, so. Right. Now, there's some recent news about uh, you in the assembly and that you were appointed to chair of a new New York State Assembly Committee on Science and Technology. Uh, well, why was the committee established now and what are you hoping to accomplish? Uh, the committee is very exciting and, and, and I sought out the, the chairmanship of it when I heard that they were considering starting one. The, the Senate has a, a similar committee that they've had for a few years. But uh, what is great about the committee is um, we have a staff and we focus on um, drilling down on some of the more technical or scientific issues that maybe other committees have uh, on their plate as well, but don't really have the, the time to focus on getting in-depth answers. So one of the things that we're looking at right now is what other states are doing to accelerate the uh, deployment of electric car charging stations around the state, which is where uh, car technology is going. Uh, but when you speak to people in the automobile business or you speak to uh, uh, consumers, there is something called range hesitancy, uh, range anxiety, where they would like to buy an electric car and the, the prices are coming right, right down, but they're concerned that where they like to travel they may not be able to recharge at appropriate intervals. So our committee um, is working on that it, and it, it, it is one topic. We're also looking at the big worldwide issue of data privacy and what, uh, what kind of protections uh, individuals need to make sure that we are not all being tracked against our will or uh, having people make money on the tracking of information about us and to try and give uh, the individual more tools in, in a world where that whole uh, level of technology is uh, changing uh, rapidly around the world as our uh, governmental responses to that in other states in Europe and in, in Washington. We had a, a, a round table of, of a week ago with experts um, from the technology side and from the uh, legal and uh, privacy rights side and, and uh, had a really good discussion. Well, there, I, this is a very, obviously to a lot of people, important topic. So I'm wondering, was there any, what, what, what impressions did you, I wouldn't say conclusions, I almost did, but I'll say what impressions did you take away from the forum? Well, I, I think that um, from, um, the technology companies, there actually were a variety of opinions. Um, some were uh, actually uh, sensitive to, to some of these issues and some companies have different policies and what they do with information and what, uh, what notice they give uh, their customers as it relates to information. Uh, others uh, took a viewpoint of, well, this allows you to get all sorts of information uh, our products supposedly for free, we're not so sure, but we're gonna delve into it. And on, on the other side, there have been uh, legislation, there's some in, interesting bills before Congress, there's a variety of issues that have been introduced on a piecemeal basis in front of the legislature. Uh, uh, California, Virginia, Washington State are in this space. Uh, and New York really needs to uh, come up with uh, some level of uh, protection for our residents. And so that's what I'm working on with others in the legislature. But, uh, you know, in, in terms of the takeaway, I, I'd say one takeaway is how on even a month by month basis, the, the contours of this issue continue to expand. And if you follow what's going on in Europe, one of the issues, sub-issues are, what are they doing in terms of information about children and marketing the children? And should that be uh, uh, barred? Uh, and uh, what, how this information is, you think of it as just sort of information you may have shared, uh, but other kinds of tracking information that you don't really know you're being tracked, how is that being used in algorithms to make decisions for you, about you, 
Um, uh, what right do you have to question how an algorithm made determinations about you? So it's, uh, we have facial recognition technology. Other states are looking at, at that and the implications of that. It is growing as, as quickly as, uh, as uh, the, the internet um, uh, is fast paced and so is this issue, so. Yeah, I mean, I completely uh, sympathetic to all the points you made and it's interesting. You might think this is an issue for the federal government, but I suspect individual states, depending upon their makeup, will have somewhat different takes on the issue. And it's important, I think, that the state of New York, his views on the matter are in the mix, in the conversation. Well, the, uh, the federal government has not acted yet. There's some good bills there, but some of those bills actually may end up not preempting the states and allowing the states to come up with, with uh, better laws. I mean, some of the technology folks would prefer maybe a federal solution that might make compliance simpler, but um, we're, we're getting into it and we, we, we will see where we come out uh, with hearing from people on all sides of the issue as I think the key to a, a good result. And I think one of the good things about your committee, the new committee, as I understand it, is that it brings a focus to the issue the assembly really hadn't had in the past. Yeah, no, uh, this is this is our our mission. And, you know, some of the other issues that we're looking at with the committee, uh, cybersecurity, ransomware, um, the ability of municipalities uh, to create their own broadband systems, which is not necessarily such an issue, um, certainly in Rye Brook or in Westchester, but upstate where the telecommunications industry has not invested in wiring communities for the internet, some local governments are looking at the option around the country and, and in New York State of creating, up, creating their own system that they would then invite ISPs to come in and uh, internet providers to come in and compete on their lines. But these are areas that have like no service right now. So something has to be done. These are some of the topics we're looking into. It's very exciting. Right. I mean, the, the other related to your com new committee that occurred was in April of 2021. You were instrumental in passing the Digital Inclusion Grant Program, which provides $15 million that various types of public service or other community organizations can bid for to help uh, expand the access uh, of broadband in their communities, provide uh, training for people who need it and provide equipment for people who need it. I think in the pandemic, I mean, there are just stories in the newspaper, even in a relatively affluent area like Westchester of students who were just unable to get a strong broadband signal to do their work. And the only equipment they had to do their work was on an iPhone, which is clearly suboptimal. Yeah, yeah. well, it, as you say, it is. It spans the all ages because it's kids in school, but it's also uh, people looking for work or senior citizens um, trying to access uh, healthcare, vaccines, uh, um, uh, COVID testing. Um, what you described it perfectly, John. What we're doing, but there's a name for it, and it, these are called digital inclusion programs that have those three elements of the the device, the broadband access, and then the training component. And so uh, I am working with people nationally on trying to get this uh, into New York State. We have now a, a grant program that uh, we're gonna be set, it's uh, adopted in the budget. We're gonna be setting up with the state education department. But the goal is, because all this really happens locally and it could be a local senior program, it could be uh, a local not-for-profit, it could be a, lo a local library, will set up one of these digital inclusion programs and try and get people who are not digitally fluent and don't have the equipment or the knowledge to get them into the world that, that many of us take for granted. So very exciting to be involved in this and, and the fact that we're able to get this included in the budget is a, a, a great win for uh, equity. And I mean, this is 
uh, unfortunately, who's left out of uh, the digital world, it is, it is often based upon resources, uh, race, class, uh, opportunity, and, and uh, so this is one of the things we do uh, to try and, and provide a little more uh, technological equity into uh, the world that we live in. Right. And it relates very clearly to the debate at the national level about potentially the changing meaning of the word infrastructure, because some of these things are very clearly uh, infrastructure related and most, and very important. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and certainly essential. I mean, I think if we learned something in COVID, uh, you know, you mentioned the kids in school not having adequate devices. Many school districts would provide uh, kids and who did not have a, a device, a Chromebook or some other kind of a device, but if they didn't really know how to use it or if they didn't have an adequate connection at home, it, it, they, they were losing educational opportunity. They're, some of that school year is lost if they can't function uh, remotely in that way. So uh, we're look, looking to uh, roll that out, roll that program out um, uh, later this year. Well, this, this sounds very promising. Well, Steve, I don't want to take up too much of your time. So thank you very much for being with us here today. I greatly appreciate it. And we'll see you back again. John, I, I enjoyed it. And uh, this, uh, again, my compliments to you and the Village of Rye Brook for setting up this series. I think it's a, a great way for uh, Rye Brook residents to uh, have access to what's going on and, and uh, in, increase uh, the communication. It's, a, it's a, a great community with great things going on. And this is another way people can get connected. So John, thank you. And uh, thank the Village of Rye Brook. All right. Well, thank you again, Steve. Bye-bye.